All right. Do you want me to go ahead? I'll just go ahead and start and yes. chime in. Hi, everybody. My name is Jen Much. I'm the science coordinator here at Santa Clara County Office of Education. And I'm, and I'm with Anna Pacata, academic technology specialist at the county office. Awesome. So welcome to our episode. Oh my gosh, 33. <laughs> it's crazy. We've done over 30 episodes of um, blogs and webinars and um, all recorded. And this is being recorded, just so you know. And we're happy to do a session on Jamboard with you all. You've probably been seeing it popping up everywhere and all of your social media feeds and everywhere else. And so we just thought it would be fun to just do a couple of things with it today. So um, on the next slide, we're gonna show you an actual link to a Jamboard. We'd love for you to all get on there if you can, and maybe we can put it in the chat um, as well. Yes. And we're gonna start with just a check-in, because I saw this, um, I just went down a Twitter wormhole, <laughs> and I saw um, lots of different ideas for um, using Jamboard. So if you can go to this link, so it's a bit.ly, and you get right to our jam our first slide on our Jamboard. And I want you to, you guys will see different post-its at the bottom as you see on my screen now. And I just want you to check in with us. How are you feeling? Put your name, district, what you do, fill out the um, post-it and then just move it under the face that you're feeling right now. And then we'll kind of share out a little bit maybe after that. So I did an example too. So let me also show you what it's looking like live. <clears throat> As you can see. Um, and just a little background about Jamboard. It is a it is part of a Google. Um, and Jen is going to talk a little bit more, more about that in a moment. Um, it's all easily embedded into Google Classroom. Um, it's a great tool. So if you can go ahead and just click on the if you click on the post-it you can see that it highlights. You can actually even change the color if you want, or if you want to add a new post-it, you can. Um, the other tools that are on the left-hand side, and we're going to practice a bit with this later too, is you can have a pen. You can actually erase what you write on the Jamboard. Um, there's the mouse that you can select something. So I can select the post-it and I'm moving it around, as you probably can see. Um, and then again, over here is the post-its. So you can see how you can add um, different color post-its as a couple of you already did. And you can draw, do a laser so I could sh show that I could see. Okay, Julie is, Julie is here from Campbell, just circling that. Hi, Julie, how are you? It's good to see you. <laughs> and is everybody able to get it? Uh, oh, you know what? No. <laughs> I am sorry. I'm, I posted to the waiting room earlier, so all my messages have been getting sent to the waiting room instead of the regular room. Uh-oh. <laughs> now I posted it in the chat. There it is. <laughs> all right. Then Heather can get on there now, hopefully. Yes, I can. Thank awesome. you. Awesome. <laughs> there, now I see everybody coming in. Sorry. Cool. Yeah, so just put your sticky note somewhere and this is a really great way if you're using it with your students just a, a lot of doing doing a check-in is a really great idea each day or each week just to see how the kids are doing um, the versions I've there's several versions of these and then what I'll also show you on another slide and I'll come back to this one so we can see it but yeah so Jenna also put in because we've got the bitmoji craze going <laughs> so if you wanted to choose a bitmoji to fill in and put on the Jamboard um, you can do that as well. Um, yeah, so for this one, when I created it, I just thought, you know, well, what if, what if students didn't necessarily want to show who they were? So I just put like people icons at the bottom of the page. And what's nice with an image, like you can, this I inserted from my computer, but you can find images on the web and insert them. And once you have it, you just, it's just copy paste. I had the orange one on and it just copy paste and it just made all those copies of the orange person. And so you can go in and drag your person over how you're feeling in the day. And then I would maybe, you know, say to the group, you know, if you're not, if you're having a bad day or, you know, feel free to chat with me on the side and I'm happy to talk to you about it because right now there are a lot of crazy things going on right now. We don't know what's going through our students' minds. And I know that, you know, all of you, we're all going through our own things right now. So we're all in different spaces. And 
I'm just thankful that all of you are here with us today to play around with Jamboard because we were really looking for something fun to do today. Yeah, for sure. So you probably see what I did is I just dragged, you could do that too, like Jenna said, just drag the color, you know, one of the people at the bottom, green or blue or purple, and just pick one and move it over to how you're feeling. So going back to the first slide deck or slide, all right, so we have other folks are here today. Thank you. We have Diana's here. Hi, Diana. We have Chris also. Awesome. Yeah, I, I don't see mine for, for some reason. Oh. Did it disappear? You know what might have happened if I wonder if somebody chose the same post it and was writing on it and That's it, possible. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I'll go back to mine. This is kind of weird. <laughs> cool. Yeah, thanks, Don. Welcome. So yeah, we're gonna we're we'll come back to it. You guys, you guys still have it if you want to have it up and work with that. And we're gonna move into the next part of our um, presentation. And Jenna's gonna take that over. Um, Actually, well, she's going to talk about this one first, then she can take it over. Yeah, so, <laughs> or you can still do that. So we have lots of different strategies for using Jamboard. We can talk about how to do it in different content areas. But then if after this, you really want to learn more, one of my favorite places to go to is just the Google Teacher Center. And they have all these first day trainings. And I knew that they had trainings for Google Classroom and Docs and Slides, but I didn't realize they actually had a welcome to your first day of Jamboard. So if you really want to get to know it a little bit better, check out the Google Teacher Center and learn from there because that's actually where it comes from. So it has some really great trainings. So. Hi, I'm sorry to interrupt. Can you please send the link one or put the link up? I joined late. To, oh, uh, yes. Of sorry course. about that. No worries. It's in the chat right now. And I am going to take over. And I'm going to get into oh, the math part of this. So when it comes to Jamboard and math, we've started just playing around with some of our favorite math sites. And I'm going to just start with this, which one doesn't belong. So these slides are linked to all of these different templates. And so here's which one doesn't belong. Basically, what you do is you take a look at an image and then you decide which one of these images doesn't belong. But the beauty of it is that it could really be any of them. And I'm not, we're not gonna go through it together. I'm just kind of gonna quickly show you some different images that you can use. On the very first slide of it, it's, I put the site, so W-O-D, b.ca this is where you can get all of these images but i just thought this would be a fun one to do in jamboard because you can take those post-its and people could put their name over whichever image they feel like doesn't belong and then they can have a discussion about it or we you could do a whole group discussion so that was one idea that i had with that one and then dot talk. So I've started to see some of the dot talks on Jamboard recently and I just thought it was really cool. So one resource that I love to go to is San Francisco Unified has all this math curriculum that they've put out there for free and a lot of it has some really great number talks and dot talks and so from the fourth grade standards mm -hmm. I put I, I pulled some of these right. dot talks. Hey, sorry. That's okay. That's and, okay. Oh, let's see. There we go. And I just thought, you know, if you're in a virtual meeting with students, you can use the reactions and have students look at the pattern and give you a thumbs up when they know the number total number of dots. And you okay, can, I'm sorry to interrupt, but yeah. how do you get this thumbs up pattern or where did oh, you Oh, so the uh, thumbs up is so you guys have reaction so at the bottom of your screen can you guys give me a thumbs up there's a reaction so there's either a thumbs up or there's like a clapping oh yeah 
right there? Yeah. Okay. So if I were doing this in on the Zoom, Zoom, okay. Yeah, I would have my students give me a thumbs up when they see they see the toll number, and then I would go to the next screen, and then I can have students share out how they saw this pattern, right? So maybe they saw it in two groups of four and one group of three, and then I can just you know write the name here and and then write out the mathematical thinking for it. So this is a dot talk. And one that I really wanted to share with you is one that I actually did live. We did live with a group of teachers over in Gilroy, which is estimation 180. So these slides have the link to the template and you can make a copy of it if you want to. But these teachers had never been in, most of them had never been into Jamboard at all. So. For those who've never been in, we decided what we would do is give them a time to explore. You have two minutes, do whatever you want. And this is what happened when you ask people to explore. They play around with all the tools. They want to just draw. They, some people figured out how to put images and GIFs. And this is just the exploration part of it. Once you got that all out of them, then we got really into the mathematics of it all. And Estimation 180 is just full of all of these great activities where you start to build your number set. So this day one, we just started with day one. The question is, what is Mr. Stadel's height? And we just asked them, okay, if we're gonna estimate, what is an estimate that we know is too low? And these are the answers that we came up with or that the teachers came up with. And then what is an estimate that's too high? Here are some estimates that they came up with. And then we talked about what is a strategic estimate. So what would, what do we actually, based on the too low and too high, what's that strategic estimate that we really think um, his height is? So we got them to do it on Jamboard. And then after that, we got them into a Flipgrid. And I actually did the sample in Flipgrid um, before we, oh did they actually went into and did the task number two in Flipgrid. So we just thought that just the use of Jamboard to get all that thinking out there was really fun and it was really, you know, a powerful way to see everybody's thinking all in one space. So I have a bonus that I'm not really going to go over, but if you want to check out visual patterns, that's another one. But um, so I know that was a lot. Okay, I, I'm sorry, I must have missed something. Yes. Um, so you go on Jamboard, you create a Jamboard, and then you share it on Google Classroom, and then that's how the students yeah. have access to this. Um, so, le yeah, let me just show you. Any of those that I linked to, those are templates. So you can, you can once you get onto it, you can always make a copy of it, but it works just like a Google Doc where this is a link that you would share with your students and if you wanted people to edit it so right now this is anybody with the link oh can edit so this one actually is set to if i it would probably normally be any viewer so you're going to want to change it from viewer to editor and once you have this as editor then if you copy this link and put it into your Google Classroom, then students can come and collaborate on it. Okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome. So yeah, I actually just shared with you right now a little bit about how it is um, similar to maybe Google Docs or Google Slides, but I wanted to open this up. So now that you've kind of seen some things using Jamboard, how do you think this compares to Google Docs or Slides? Or is it the same thing? Or there... it's, it's a great visual collaboration tool. Um, what's nice about it is um, having the sticky notes and being able to have a group kind of think around it and having different slides. It's a great uh, brainstorming tool also. Definitely. Um, and if you want to share ideas, if you don't want to talk, you can share some ideas in the chat as well. And but thank you for, thank you, Julie and Heather for sharing that any other people have ideas. 
If not, we'll move into a science component of it. <laughs> How you can use it in science. All right, so am I going to let you share, right? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Ah, and Brett says, great for shy students. Very true. Yes. You do have kids that don't wanna talk sometimes. All right, so I'm gonna show you how, oh, where did I, where did it go? Sorry, got too many tabs up as usual. <laughs> All right. I know what you mean. Oh, I just shared the, I just, I shared the slides, by the way, if you didn't get the link, it was in the, it was in the um, chat. So with um, science, I found that it's really interesting um, what I found that most examples I've found are actually in science. Um, so one of the things that you can do, and I got, got this from Twitter and I'll take, I'll go to this person's Twitter account. Hopefully she doesn't mind, but um, she was posting some, what are called DQBs or driving question boards. So she's presenting um, a phenomenon to her students and what she, what she see on the jam board is the phenomenon is at the center and then the students have filled out different sticky notes um, on for the phenomenon. You can also use the Jamboard. What I've noticed what teachers have done is give each student a separate, their own board, and the students can do developing and creating models, which is one of the science and engineering practices. And so they're creating and drawing a model of, let's say, you know, randomly water cycle, let's say. And so what you can do is each student has their own and then students can go back and give each other feedback on their models and things like that, obviously with lots of um, guided expectations and modeling for that. And um, another example would be through using the question formulation technique. Um, if you're not familiar with that, that's a really great inquiry tool we can talk about maybe that could be another session this summer we'll see and then also if you're not familiar with clues that's another way to get students to um, develop kind of asking some questions about a phenomenon so in that same um, Jamboard what we did was we had the um, another slide so hopefully you're seeing this one and our collaboration tools one um, oh that's not it that's the wrong one Oh no, that's not the, oh, sorry, it is. <laughs> sorry, I've like done so many jam boards lately, it's kind of crazy. But um, if you go to the third one, I did, I did develop a clues chart. And if you're not familiar with clues, it's actually the next level up from KWL and it's really science focused. So, um, and I embedded a phenomenon there. So then I like this one because it's local. Um, I don't know if you've seen it, it trended on Twitter for a while and I actually had it on another science webinar. So um, it's the coyote and badger phenomenon. So what I would do with students is I would just start with, you know, what do you think you know about the coyote and badger? And so they would be putting in either sticky notes and we don't have to do it right now unless you really want to um, engage in this, but, um, and then we get into what are they learning? Um, and then you, you're not filling out the whole clues chart in one sitting, right? You actually are doing in science investigations with the students. They're doing a little bit more research and then they're adding to the clues chart as they're working through um, their investigations and phenomenon. And so the wonder would be what are some questions they might have still or you know, they might have it throughout the unit. And then the S is about the science. What is the science evidence that supports this particular phenomenon? So um, it's just a really great way to introduce phenomenon or it could be introduced, as I said, in just a driving question board. You just put that phenomenon in the center of your, of your jam board and the kids can post, do post-its all around it. Um, so it's just a kind of, it's just a great tool to do that with. And as you all mentioned already, collaboration, um, it can lead to dialogue and discussions and it's really pretty cool. So um, with that, I know I talked really fast. <laughs> um, oh, I did want to show you this Twitter account. Um, just her couple other driving question boards she has. So, oh, I don't think it went right to her. Oh, it did, okay. So of course, you know, love in the Bitmoji classroom. <laughs> so she starts with that and she's explaining kind of what she's doing with it. And then she did, I, the one I showed you on the slide about the questions about how can you see the moon during the day? It's just nice because it's bigger. And then she also did one about shadows 
Okay. And then you can see also what she did was the kids put their initials in, which is a good way to track, you know, that kids are participating as well. Um, and then this one is again about the moon again, kind of connecting it back to moon and stars and day and night or the sky. See how that's different. So yeah, some really good examples there. And again, if you, if you're on Twitter, <laughs> I sound like I'm a Twitter. I don't, I love Twitter, by the way. Not, well, not right. Sometimes right now it's not so great, but um, for learning, it's great professional learning. So if you just do like hashtag um, Jamboard, you'll find tons of different examples of how people are using Jamboard. So that's where I got a couple of my ideas as well. So based on that, again, let's do a little sharing. What are some other ways that you can see or use Jamboard as a collaboration or discussion tool. And again, if you want to unmute yourself and say something or put something in the chat, that would be great. Um, I like that it's both synchronous and asynchronous so that um, it could be kind of a slow chat with um, students adding things slowly with post-its over time, or it could be used um, as we're using it now um, in Zoom and we could all be collaborating at the same time. Yeah, thanks, I like that, that's great. And then you could go back and organize um, everyone's thoughts, um, you know, and come up with patterns and so forth. Yeah, and we have some things in the chat too. So Don is saying collaboration around a math task. Brett is saying, I'm an art teacher and want to use it for class art critiques. Ooh, Ooh. I love that. That would be really neat to put just different pieces of artwork on each page and then, you know, people, students get to put sticky notes on each one. Um, and I know, let's see share out virtual gallery walks. So yes, I love those ideas. Okay, well, we do have Sorry. some more. I time. skipped to the, <laughs> yeah. did I? No. Oh that... yeah, I'm right there. Oops, no, I went too far ahead. <laughs> That's okay, Sorry. because I am going to take over. If yes. That's okay. This part, yes. And I'm gonna get into this creative piece and hopefully we have time to, to, to play a little bit. Um, that's kind of why I rushed through some of the math things. So the last strategy is just to promote creative thinking. And one other option, because we've been using the web version, but I haven't even talked about really the mobile version of Jamboard, which is actually a little bit better than what you can do on the computer. So I'm going to attempt to connect my iPad. So fingers crossed that this works. Let's see. All right. Give me a thumbs up if you're seeing my iPad now. Okay, yes. So this is the mobile version of it. I'm in Jamboard and I'm gonna go just to a new jam. And so one of my strategies for creative thinking would be just planning or storyboarding, right? So if I wanted to, if I was like creating a film or something or just a story and I wanted just a storyboard, I can, what's nice is I have my pencil. So it's, it's really easy for me to just draw things out really quickly. The nice thing about it though is that this, I don't know why this isn't on the computer. We need to give feedback to Google and tell them they need to fix it. They have auto draw. So they have assistive drawing tools. And if I click this one right here, it's auto draw. And so if I needed to do something, so that's a clock. If I wanted a clock on the wall, right? If I wanted to draw, sometimes it doesn't know what you're drawing, but hopefully it knows what I'm drawing. This is a dog. So this one looks more like my dog. Here's the select tool. I can make it bigger. And um, I just love this feature from a tablet or from a mobile device. So even from your phone, if you download the app, you have access to auto draw. It also has um, text. So you should be able to. So if I just draw a dog, it's gonna write the word dog right there. There we 
we go. So there are some different features from the mobile device than, than the web version. And if your students have access to that, it might be kind of fun to play around with that as well. So I'm going to just go back to this. And I was going to get into just this creative game. I'm taking this course. It's a makerspace um, course at, at Krauss, the Krauss Center of Innovation at Foothill College. And one of our tasks, it's actually due this weekend. So we've kind of, we've made this game in Jamboard and I wanted to kind of test it out with you a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to copy this link and put it in the chat. So if you can click on that link and it is going to take you to a game that we decided to call Back to the Drawing Board. And this is actually a good test to even see if it really works. So how this works is you guys will have 60 seconds to draw and I have a wheel that I'm going to spin. And so whatever category it lands on, you're going to, what you're gonna do is you're going to choose one of the images. So you're gonna have four images on your board and, and you're gonna have 60 seconds to draw something related to that category. You can choose any of these images, draw something in those 60 seconds and the person who is the czar or the judge, it's kind of like apples to apples. It's just a creative apples to apples. You have 60 seconds to draw an image and the czar is the judge and they will get to go through and choose who the winner of that round is. Okay, can you kind of go through the step-by-step -step process here? Sure. Um, because I, like I'm on a slide that says player one. Yes. And some so avocados on it. So what do I do? So here's what I want you to do. If, so if I click at the top right here, I actually can see who's on each board. So actually, how many people are in this? How many people do we have in here? We have nine people. Okay, so where it says player one, if you can just go to a board, click, click at the top, go to a board where nobody is, and then, then type, instead of saying player one, if you could just type your name into that board, that would actually be helpful. And I'm going to player six here. I'm gonna duplicate oh. some of these boards so that, so the nice thing is that I can duplicate these boards. The limit is 20 though. You can only have up to 20 boards in Jamboard. I've reached that limit once. So if you wanna play, you don't have to play. If you wanna just watch, you can just watch. But it looks like we have some people. So uh, Julie and Chris, thank you for choosing a board. You, we're gonna test this out. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm going to change my screen share to share my whole desktop. Okay. And now I'm going to just um, spin this. So I'm gonna spin this wheel. Okay, so it's a fictional character. Now, does everybody who wants to play, is everybody who wants to play on a different board? Yes. Does there, is anybody need help getting onto a board? Okay, so you're gonna use the draw tools. Just do the best that you can, have fun with it and you're gonna turn one of the images into a fictional character. And let me just give you a clue that in this board, if you want to change the rotation of an image, you could do that. You can click on an image and take the upper left-hand corner and you can rotate it if you want to. You can rotate it and you can resize it too. So there's no rules. You don't have to leave it in the same position. So we'll just try this one time and see if it works because this is our final activity. Okay, are we ready? So you have 60 seconds to draw, ready, go. Oh. I actually have sound, so I'm gonna share my computer.
that was your 60 seconds. So go ahead and put your pens down and we'll see what we came up with. And so I have this image of a trophy that I put and I'm just gonna copy it. So control C and so if I were the czar, I would just go through and take a look at what everybody did. I love it, it's so cute. Ooh, kind of like that. I, I like all these, I like how that one was rotated and turned into a person. Cute. Oh my gosh. I, I love the use of those avocados in that one. So if I were to do this, I would go through and I think. I see, I don't see mine. There, I'm gonna choose, I'm actually gonna choose, I'm gonna cheat and I'm gonna choose two. I'm gonna do that one. Although actually, just like apples to apples, I was thinking that, um, that the whoever gets chosen gets to be the czar in the next round. But this was just a fun game that we thought, and all of these images are free to use. So if you go to unsplash.com, then you have all these beautiful images that you can download. I actually have the extension. So every time I do a new tab, it gives me an unsplash image. And if I like it, I just download it. But this site right here is my favorite site to get free images. It's unsplash.com. You don't have, you can give credits to whoever took the, took the photo, but you don't have to. And they're just beautiful and they're fun. And I'm, co I'm collecting images for games like this. So that was kind of our final, um, our final tip, our game that we were gonna play. So I thank you all for participating. And I don't know if you guys, I do, I did want to ask the question, how can some of these strategies be applied to other content areas? And Carla, I see you out there. So I, if you're willing to share, I would love to hear what you've been doing in the library with Jamboard, because she actually has an actual Jamboard in her library. Um, yeah, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Um, well, you, a lot of the things actually Jenna helped me with, um, the one that I really liked was when they would take pictures with, I was using Google tablets, so that was kind of nice, kind of like an iPad, but less money. And um, the kids would take pictures from pages in the book that they were reading, and then they would talk, uh, use like emojis or highlight a picture and talk about the emotion in um, the picture. So they'd say, this person is feeling this way because, you know, just kind of more analyzing um, either the text or mainly the pictures because it's a K through five school. So most of them use picture books. Uh, but I really like that one. And then the other one was um, just showing them a picture and then asking them what do they think's going on in this story. And so they were really excited about that when I told them what the actual story was about. And really, that's it. I didn't get to do a whole lot because, because then we kind of closed up. So I, I just, yeah, I just got it last year. And now I'm, I, I really do enjoy it, though. The kids love to play with it. But you really kind of need to have them have a, a device like, uh, I think tablets are the best to do it with. Ah, thank you. Any other ideas of how it could be applied to different content areas? Well, I was wondering how to use it for like chemistry to write out chemical equations because if you don't have an iPad, then how can you, you know, with a pen and a mouse, it's kind of hard to write out like chemical equations. So I don't see it being like a notepad, for instance, or being able to use it for chemistry. Am I missing something here? Well, the only the thing that you could maybe do is on the post-its write it out. But yeah, I was thinking the same thing. It would be nice. Again, Jenna and I maybe needs to reach out to Google. Maybe they could have some kind of a text box that you can write in something in as well and move it around. So, um, or you yeah, can that draw would make it right in. Neater. Yeah. yeah. Seriously, anytime I think of something, I there's the three dots in Jamboard. If you go to those three dots and you say, go to send feedback, I send all of my ideas for what I want for Jamboard because I think that in this space, in this space of distance learning, Jamboard is really a tool that we really can make a lot of really good use of. 
So I'm hoping that if, if we all just start sending feedback to Google and to the Jamboard team, that they're going to start building some of these pieces out so that it can be a really great collaborative, collaborative tool in the classroom. Yeah, but I've never even heard of this, so this is great to learn. Thank you. Yay. Yeah, thanks for playing along. This has been a lot of fun. So all of our recorded episodes and all of the links and the recording for this one will all go on this page, bit.ly slash sccoe blog, B-L-O-G. And we're gonna take a break for two weeks because we have so many things coming up within the two weeks and we just thought teachers need a break also. And we're gonna come back to doing more of these distance learning webinars because there's so much out there and there's so much to learn and we love hearing from all of you. So, or if you have an idea and you want to come on here and share an idea and work with us, like we would love to have you on to share some of your ideas as well. So reach out to us. Here's our contact information. And we just seriously thank you for taking time out of your day to be here with us. This for me was a lot of fun. I don't know about you, Jen. <laughs> yes, it was very fun. And Brett, you have a question about a certificate of participation. Oh, we don't have that right now, but maybe when we send, if you can send us your email and we can send you the, the we give a slide, a slide with the recording and all that, we can say that and we can just sign it yeah. and say we, you were here, that work. <laughs> That's a good idea though. We should do certificates now or badging or something. Who knows? <laughs> but, yeah. To send us, shoot us an email, and then we'll get we'll get something to you for sure. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. I'm glad thank you, you joined us today.